well, some really, really strange events are going on. Um, it's really, really good and some bad, but interesting. And um, I don't even know where to begin. I look like hell because it's been like hell. <laughs> um, I'm going to explain some of my family experiences and a lot of other people are going to make comments that I shouldn't be talking about family. And that's one of our biggest problems is our family secrets. If you're so proud of your life, why are you scared to talk about it? Why would you be ashamed to say any aspect of what's going on in your life? And why do some people tell some stories about your family and the same family another person is telling the completely opposite story? Which one's the truth? How come this is going on all over the place? That we're finding out the truth is not so much the truth within governments and corporate world and the medical world, you know, and have we ever really looked at how many families are not getting along? And basically what's happening is everybody has different stories. Why are our stories completely different? So that has been my observation and I find it quite interesting and everything that I've experienced in my life has brought me to this point where I know the information that I know. My mother has Alzheimer's which is really odd because every time I have a conversation with her she can hang into the conversation and yet with other people she can't seem to carry on a conversation at all and it appears that if you're talking what she wants to talk about, she'll talk about it all the time. I haven't seen her for a couple of years. She might have gone even further downhill. But I made that observation that she could communicate with different people. And depending on the subject was sort of like the trigger that sets her brain off where she's in la la land or she's really focused. We will always, always, always talk about what interests us, what we really, really want from our soul purpose. And as far away as you get from your soul purpose, the illness will be created. I had no idea that it all could be reversed. That if you cure the causes, the body can regenerate itself. Unfortunately, my behavior may change, but society's behaviors won't change, so that's why everybody dies. You pretty much, in order for that to switch around, you have to get everybody wanting to, to live and live correctly. If that happens, everything changes. It'd be an interesting conversation. You know, like it's the wildest lie out there, but that's what I've observed is most people um, that are coming up with these rules and laws and, you know, structures, you know, how everything works in our world, they're very angry, depressed people. And when you are gaining information from that painful experience, you're going to access the information field and it's going to tell you the wrong information all the time. But as much as you can be loving and happy and access the information field, you can solve any problem. Now that I didn't quite know, but I did know that if you really, really think about it, if you're really, really mad, doesn't shit come out of your mouth that you don't really mean or the things that you regret or, you know, but when you're really, really happy and everything works out, it always works out. Isn't it always a good thing when it always works out? You know, you always, if you're, you're with somebody and you have a doubt of whether you should be marrying this guy or not, you know, there's an inner voice that says, no, this guy ain't for you. But you bury that inner voice and you marry the guy anyways and wonder why you're not getting along. It's not the right person that you're supposed to be with. But ultimately, up until globally we all start recognizing what's going on, um, 
it's going to escalate and escalate. Our families are going to get so torn apart. I, I, I'm already starting to see a sign that uh, people don't want to have kids unless the world straightens out. Because parents may have good intentions of how they want to raise their children. Um, but as long as there's a society out there, one way or another, it's affecting them. You have to be under total control, which as long as you're under control over your children, you're not think letting your children learn how to think for themselves. So ultimately, as long as society's not healthy and you need to keep them safe through control, you're not allowing that child to grow up to think for itself. So ultimately, we've had our genetics are basically angry people, even though they you know, may appear to be happy, um, we buy our happiness with stuff. So a lot of very wealthy people um, have a lot of stuff and the more stuff like Donald Trump. I mean, if that's a prime example, that guy is majorly depressed, that he has to go in around and stimulate his mind into something so, you know, greedy and have stuff and gold plates. I mean, the man has to wrap himself around I'm special with stuff because he can't wrap himself around the concept that I'm special with or without stuff. You know, so can you kind of see that our addictions to things and how we experience our life has been um, depressing us? Um, because we're not ready you know as long as you have that stuff you can say no way I'm happy you know but take that stuff away and these people would crack and crack fast if Donald Trump knew he could never have any money and he lived exactly the same as everybody else at the bottom and everything was equal how do you think that that man would need medication I'm just saying in a world filled with everybody needing medication right now, what is it we're trying to block? Everybody's on antidepressants, meaning everybody is depressed. And most of these antidepressants are making you even more depressed. But it's a medical world that needs to make you sick so they can profit because it's feeding an awful lot of people. A lot of CEOs have been making an awful lot of money. A lot of salespeople have been making a lot of money. A lot of doctors. The list goes on and on. Regardless, um, some of my observations uh, um, with my mother's Alzheimer's, I know it's curable. It's never been curable. Nobody's ever seen it to be able to write it down. But there is a way. Things make sense that her illness is created by her social environment. And She's got lots of things to um, want to forget. Um, and this is a really, really hard thing for me to do to share what's been going on with my family. Um, I love them all very, very much. And most of them would say, I haven't gotten on with my life. You know, I haven't just forgive and forget. Um, the problem is, is the behavior is consistently there. Um, I had a kidney infection when I was something like three years old and wet the bat. For a year, the churches and doctors told my parents that I was lazy and uh, needed to be beaten all the time. So every morning I was, uh, I woke up to a beating. Now the behavior changed from the beatings, but all of the language, because we're all tape recorders, so they got in their tape recorded beings that I was lazy, I was dirty, I was no good. Every single bad thing you could say about a person, that's what my father said. My father also has these rules that say, can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I'm 50 and still learning. That guy's been saying it since he was 30. And he's got to be 80-something. I don't know. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I'd given, uh, I, I thought I'd, I'd give my mother a phone call. 
but I haven't talked to her for at least a year or two. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's only been about a year. And my dad had a heart attack and was in a coma and in the hospital. Nobody could reach me because nobody would phone me. Long story, but they are not family that is supportive when you're emotionally being crushed with that hellish abusive divorce that I went through. I mean, that's the time you need people to raise you up, but my family were the people to put you down. Yes, they've helped me out a little tiny bit financially, but my father knew the justice system. He spent most of his life proud as hell to be able to manipulate the justice system his way at all times. But <coughs> when I needed it to feed my kids, he would not give me any legal advice at all. Made it as uh, uh, impossible to survive the hell that I went through. And remember, for like 10 years, there have been child support orders where I owe child support to the deadbeat while the children live in my house. And the amount of abuse that was daily, I had to still work and you can only get minimum wage when you're dealing with that kind of shit because you tend to cry a little bit, cry at work, you know, or it, you could at least have your emotions in a low, you know, and you didn't have to think. Um, having a job, I went to school taking programming, graduated, made miracles happen, but um, there was no stopping that emotional abuse. And that's where my field of study was, is trying to understand what the hell is going on and um, how to stop it. Because I was interested in having it stopped since I've had four kids and I don't want this abusive pattern to be repeated. So, <clears throat> um, interesting enough, I phoned uh, and talked with my dad and... Um, I'm just learning that uh, he's had this heart attack and I really have no interest to talk to him because the man is, you know, stab you in the knife. Um, he's got major, major issues. And uh, he has been depressed all of his life. So while he's been extremely depressed, he's looked at me with eyes that say she's lazy, she's stupid, she's no good. Every negative thing that you could say to a person is the eyes he's looking at because he was tape recorded to do so by religions and doctors and you know society said this is what it looks like to be a good parent you discipline and so he would see things that aren't there um lots of other people see great things about me but my father would always find out one time um a tent was put up for my kids to sleep out at the cottage and it wasn't facing the right direction and so he went on for a good hour about how, um, you know, I'm not doing anything right. And he just went on and on and on. And I had asked him, why is it you can't say anything good about me? And he said, look at you. There's nothing good about you. So those are the kinds of things that run through my mind if I ever phone my mother who has Alzheimer's. So, um, my dad does sound like he's had a rough time. Um, his speech is definitely sounding like he's older. And uh, he's saying he loves me, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, I'm your daughter. First of all, he thought I was his sister. And it's like, no, this is your daughter, you know, the one you hate. And uh, he ended up saying he didn't hate me. 
I'm going to continue this on an update to be continued without the damn tears. Peace out.